I know we should just give everyone permission for a split. <laughs> I have to say that I think, um, you know, having this meeting so late when Pari was trying to get their splits in was really bad news because she, she said, and many other people said, boy, they're sorry they voted for having this be a historical commission. Because, you know, here they are, they waited six weeks for us to meet to give them permission to put in the mini split. She didn't make it in time for the last meeting. And it's so and, hot. And it's so hot. So we really have to be careful about things like that, I think. It well, it's on, we're addressing it today. I, I, we're addressing it today. And I'm not sure that they, you know, about having, uh, excluding some items that are currently on and I think yeah, a mini split is yeah. one that shouldn't even, I personally don't think it should come before us. Yeah, great. So, yeah, so I'm, I've started the meeting recording on Zoom, so it's now 4.03, okay. so I think we could just get started. I don't see Bruce, but he um, he emailed a while ago, so maybe he'll join us in a minute. But. Okay. He, uh, he sent an email just at 4.02, Nate, saying the link, he was having trouble with the link. Um, um, everyone else seemed to. Yeah, everyone else <laughs> made it. And Pari's here. I emailed 19 McClellan just a minute ago. Um, I thought they were going to join us too, but I don't see anyone here yet. So we could just open the hearing and then take um, the, you know, the Lincoln Ave one. Oh, okay. So the 19 McClellan. So I'll officially call the meeting to order. Sure. Okay. So what no. you're saying. Uh, the agenda just showed up on my screen. Is that yep. what Yes. yes. Yep. So, okay. nine, so the applicant at 19 McClellan is not here? Not yet. Okay. And is the 204 Lincoln Avenue? Yes, Pari's here. Okay. So, um, and you know, we don't have, we haven't been, um, you know, uh, ratifying minutes from previous meetings. Is so that usually, yeah, usually in the decision, we have a little um, uh, summary of the discussion of the hearing. So, you know, the ZBA does it that way. And then if we have a public meeting, we could take minutes. But I guess you know, that's a discussion that we could have. So, oh, okay. So we don't really have to have it for just it, when we just have a hearing. I don't, you know, I think we, the way we write our certificates, it has the summary of the discussion. Right. So, right. yes. Okay. Okay. And then um, I think. You know, maybe we just do a roll call attendance and then we can start. On Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jennifer Taub, and we'll go up to Peggy. Okay. Peggy Schwartz is here. And Mary Marianne. Marianne Adams is here. Uh, Jim. Jim Longway here. And on my screen, Greta. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Karen. I'm here, Karen Winter. And Greta. Greta's here. Okay, thank you. So we're all here and hopefully Bruce will join us. Yeah, let me just take my email quickly. I didn't, did you respond to him, Ben? I just did, yeah. Um, I sent him the link again. Okay, great. If it doesn't work, perhaps he can phone in. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Hari, I'm promoting oh. you to a panelist so you can see everyone. And um, hey. um, oh, there you are. Hi, Pari. Hi, Pari. Pari, I've never welcomed you as a neighbor. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's been two years, so I feel, uh, I feel, I feel welcome. Thank you. Oh, well, time yes. goes fast. Yes. Um, yeah, well, so we really um, appreciate that you're here today. And what we're, this shouldn't take too long, but what we're going to do is, you know, ask you to present, sure. you know, what your, um, your application and then we may have some questions and then we'll officially what we do is we go into a closed hearing, but you're still here yes. and then we'll, yeah. any discussion we might have and we'll take a vote. Okay. Um, so I'll turn it over to you to present your application. Okay. Um, so first of all, I just want to say hello to some dear first faces and also people that I'm meeting um, for the first time. It's nice to see you all. And thank you so much for making time for us. So um, I live in 24 Lincoln Avenue with my husband and my daughter. And uh, we moved into the neighborhood two years ago. Um, 
the house um, is lovely, but it's also very hot. And so, um, we had decided to, um, we lived in it the first year, and then this year we decided to um, essentially install mini split units um, so that we can we can weather both the heat and the cold better. Um, we're going to have one unit in the ground floor because the ground floor is relatively okay. We just primarily need to get rid of the humidity. But our second floor, um, on the second floor, we're going to install four very small units. Uh, we have five bedrooms and for, in four of them, we're going to be able to uh, hopefully install these units. Uh, one of the um, one of the pieces of equipment will go in the front. So if you would kindly go back to the other slides that you have, I can locate them for you. Oh, here, if you can see them, can everyone see the map here? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are the arrows in the wrong location or based on the photographs, that's... No, that's more or less okay, actually. Okay. No, um, okay um... Yeah, you, you're good. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. I, I just wanted to show you in the photo and point and yes. I requested um, remote access to your screen so if you just can go to yeah, the if next my computer said i needed to do some restart and do a preference okay. thing so and, I don't and if you just go to the other slides i will show them i don't really need to um, to the ones that show mm -hmm. so i mean i guess here's an image yeah so this is a uh, this is uh, the elevation of the house that is facing elm street mm -hmm. and uh, the unit will most likely will go underneath uh, this window and there's a big um, bush and then also a hedge so um, we might need to take some of um, some of the vegetation cut back a little bit but essentially i think it will be either completely or um, very much um, just just let me present so it will be completely invisible uh, from the street from the elm street and if you go to the other so this is uh, the one that will be serving the bottom uh, floor and then uh, the other one. I don't know if you're able to see my little hand here on the screen. Yes. The bottom one. Um, uh, the, the, there's a there's one at the back of the house, uh, which has basically no view to the outside. You're only you're looking at a corner of our yard that is pretty much sheltered because of the L shape. And right. so the other unit will be going here. And mm -hmm. so I don't assume that there will be any visual disturbance or anything that would take off the character of the house, but um, I would be very happy to answer any questions um, should they should they present themselves. Okay. So I put together the map, I this is Nate, um, yeah. of the you know possible locations just based on your, so one is back here in the corner, roughly yes. where the arrow is, maybe it's up more yes. north, and the other one is somewhere in this location. Absolutely, yeah. okay. you're good, you've done a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Um, does anyone on the commission have any questions? Bruce. Not really. Oh, um, you just lit up on the screen. I'm uh, just checking. To, uh, uh, this is Bruce. Can can yeah. you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, yep. good. I I don't think so. Uh, the the uh, the the view is given from the white arrow. Um, from the corner of Elman and uh, Lincoln. Lincoln is that we don't actually have a photograph of that view, do we? Yes, we do. Um, um, if you go back, Nate, please to that photograph. Yeah. So oh, there we um, go. Yes. Okay. So, so that's uh, that's the planting that's screening the uh, unit, and right. it looks like it's. Uh, it's uh, coniferous and so forth. So I, I, I would imagine uh, that it's save, uh, except unless all of that planting was taken away. You've got enough space behind those uh, plants for a decent air circulation, do you? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's going to work? We do. We have to probably cut back some of the plant. But as you can see, we have two rows of vegetation. So yeah. even if we cut back some of it, there will still be a major uh, buffer zone between the view that you would see and then the unit mm. in the back. I guess our, uh, our concern to the extent that these things are a little bit odd uh, and also that we notice that they're going into houses pretty regularly now and it's a, a pattern that we've come to accept 
but uh, screening is something last time when we had this conversation on a previous applicant, it recognized that we have no control over landscaping and so forth. So in one, it, to some degree, we, we should uh, be looking at this as though it was a, cons a completely conspicuous unit and then making our judgments accordingly. Is, is that not uh, correct, Nate? Right. I think it's difficult because vegetation is exempt from review. Someone could remove the vegetation and then it's, it's you know, completely visible. Yeah. So, right, yeah. I'm not speaking, uh, that's not to mean, I mean that I uh, am inclined, inclined towards not approving. It's just that from our, our, um, our point of view as a commission, we have to recognize uh, the possibility that that might happen and how would we judge the application if indeed that were to happen. Right, and Pari, I'm, I'm guessing from the unit there'd be some tubing that would either go I either vert vertical? The, they would be very minimal um, and uh, next to um, actually, so, so it would be very minimal. The tubing is very minimal and it will be painted in white and so it will go with the trims and everything. It would look very much like that downspout that we're looking at. Exactly. Uh, and it will, we will try to ask them to do, to do it as close to the downspout as possible so that it really kind of blends in. Uh, but um, right. As you might have seen previously in other applications, the tubes are actually fairly minimal. Um, so uh, I don't assume that this would be a major, a major disturbance to the facade. I think it would be about the same size as the downspout. I mean, that's the way they are because they're, they're, they've got supply and return uh, uh, feed uh, lines, which are then uh, sheathed in insulation and the whole uh, pair, the, the so-called line set, is then wrapped in a white uh, sheath of uh, sheathing and it would look like the downspout. So I think the idea of putting it adjacent to the downspout is a very good idea. And I would suggest that uh, that we do that even if it, where we're possibly not making the condition because there may be some reason why that couldn't be done. But I think we should encourage you to do just that. Uh, believe me, I'm an architect, and I will also encourage you oh. to do it for for for, for personal reasons. So, if I, it can be done, we will definitely want it to fortify the line of the downspout. So, well, I didn't no know that, that, but that's good. Our architect representative to the commission. <laughs> Is there a way to raise one's hand on? Uh, yes. the, the, does uh, the host see hands raised? I see your hand raised. raised. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I would like to say that uh, I have four such units and I know how non-visible they are and uh, not at all obtrusive. And I think that uh, Pari has a wonderful plan for disguising the one in the front and the one in the back is not in our jurisdiction. And so I just wanted to say being someone who has the benefit of such units and knowing how we're suffering this summer and knowing that this will be architecturally, I think, integral with the, with the house uh, itself, I just want to speak strongly in favor of this. I second. Thank you. Um, okay, well, if there um, are no further questions of the applicant, then we can close the public portion of the meeting and, um, you know, go into closed session. But Pari, of course, with your continue, your, it's like a figure of speech. We'll just discuss it among ourselves, but you will be here. We might have some more questions. Yes. So is there a motion to close the public portion of the meeting? Yes, so moved. Second. Okay, all in favor. Yes, we don't have to do a voice vote, do we, Nate? Uh, I think we're okay. Yeah. Yes. We're supposed to do that when we're Zooming. Um, okay, I just have, you know, one, well, uh, of course, you know, I think we're all unanimously going to approve this. I just have a question, um, which I thought that, you know, in uh, picking up on Bruce's concern that let's say, you know, a subsequent owner were to take down all the shrubs in the front, could, there ever be something in the certificate that would say if the shrubs which are screening it come down that we would request just 
you know, maybe a little fencing to cover it. Is that something that can we can do? Well, we we could uh, we could we could condition our our, our granting on a uh, uh, acceptable screening, I suppose. Either greenery yeah. or fencing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think the commission could do that. Have a you know condition that it be screened with. I mean, you could say they've done it before, where the commission said with vegetation. So it's we could just say uh, uh, screen screen from view, uh, screen from the view of the street. The unit shall be screened from the view of right. the street. Because I think the vegetation is beautiful. It's a nice. Oh, I do too. A, yeah, and if someone in the future. I can't imagine anyone taking down the vegetation, but that they would just have to screen it some other. Um, yeah, because I mean, and as uh, Bruce said, you know, or Marianne said, you know, there's, this is going to start to be the norm, having the splits as our temperature gets hotter. Yeah, or oh, yeah. they're good for cool heating as well. Yeah. Uh, and I think I, that's, but that's not our concern anyway. Is our, it? You don't hear them from outside. Yeah. I think that's a good condition to put uh, uh, in terms of the future so that, I mean, we're looking at it long term. Right. Yes. Um, okay. Are there any other questions or comments? No. I'm not, I'm not clear on, the, uh, on how, how you're seeing the uh, down, down the road years if, if someone wanted to make a change. Oh, what's, the, what's the legality of what we're um, I guess what I was thinking is it should say, yeah, I don't know, maybe that if the vegetation, since, you know, I a, if, I, some, I, if, I, can't, if something can't be seen from the public way because of the vegetation, they still, uh, if a change is made, it still has to come before the commission because the bylaws assume okay. that that okay. vegetation might not always be there. So what we're saying is, if a decision if they ever took the vegetation away yeah. then you might have something that is unsightly from the public way that we'd have to be screened with some other material like fencing um, that was okay thank you very much yeah. i uh, jennifer i could i i, I have a, 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 a proposed wording that i think will satisfy okay. great but uh, i think it's also worth noting that these conditions um, it's not necessarily, at least my understanding of these things, is it's not necessarily um, something we have to worry about enforcing. Um, it is a provision that we insert such that if anybody has a concern, exactly. they, they can come back and the, and the decision that we've made uh, gives recourse. And we, nobody has to come back to the commission or anything because it's already established. So we're basically creating a permanent expectation of screening. And that's okay. what uh, the condition that we could put in there would yes. do. Okay. Yes. Thank okay. You. If everyone's in agreement, does someone want to make um, a motion? Well, well, I'm good for that. I, okay. I actually... Uh, <laughs> Bruce, yes. one up. Yeah. I sent, I I sent to... Uh, to uh, um, to Nate this morning or this afternoon, uh, uh, something I don't have to go and search every time, and also that he can use as the so he'll know what I'm saying, and all he has to do is to put in the thing. So basically, the motion would be move to grant the certificate of appropriateness for um, the uh, project at uh, what is it, 124 Lincoln? Uh, 204. 204 Lincoln, um, based on a finding. Uh, findings that the uh, proposed work meets the review criteria expressed in sections 8.1 and 8.2 of the Amherst Local Historic Bylaw and that the proposal is compatible with the overall appearance of the neighborhood and will have no negative impact on the Prospect Lincoln Sunset Local Historical District um, with the following condition that the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, mechanical uh, the exterior mechanical equipment shall be uh, satisfactorily screened from view of, uh, from the street. Um. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Ariane, thank you. Yes. Okay, so since it's um, we're on a Zoom call and not in person, we we have to do a voice vote. So I'll start at the top of my screen, which is Greta. 
Approved. And you should say your name, I think. Oh, Greta Wilcox, approved. Okay. Uh, Bruce? Bruce called him approved. Marianne? Marianne Adams, approved. Um, Karen? Karen Winter, approved. Oh, I think well, I skipped. I, I shouldn't be approving. What? Sorry, did you call my name? I oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm going to Peggy. I missed Peggy. Okay, I thought somebody called my yeah. name. Yeah. <laughs> Peggy Schwartz? Yes, I have uh, Peggy Schwartz approves. Okay, and Jim. Jim Romley approved. And I'm Jennifer Taub, and I approve. And can I just add one thing to Pari? <laughs> um, no, we, uh, we really feel terrible that you had to wait a few extra weeks to put in the split when it's been so hot. And we um, actually, in later on in the meeting, the public portion of this meeting, we are gonna be discussing just a few items have come up before us that we've realized probably don't, can be exempt and don't need to come before the commission. So, and the splits are one of them that we're gonna be discussing. Yes. That wasn't the point of the historic district. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm still in spirit very much in favor of the idea of the, the historic district. It would have definitely been much more convenient to have this approved um, a few weeks ago because yeah. we have a small child and we've been working from home. But oh, you know. I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. uh, you know, um, you the don't... summer has just been not ideal in many ways, and so this is just a small, small thing compared to the rest. But um, Nate will tell you once we approve it, which we just did, you don't need to wait for paperwork. Isn't that true, Nate? Yeah, I mean, I can. I'll transmit this um, either this evening or tomorrow, so you can, you know, your permit can be issued. Should you know, you can follow up tomorrow and get it moving along. Yes, and um, we've asked them to be ready for Wednesday, so hopefully. Yeah. Great. That should not be a problem. Yeah. And thank you so much. It's really nice to see everyone. Um, well, and, uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much for making the time. Oh, sure. And uh, stay cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Have okay. a nice day. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye, bye bye. Bye. So, is our next applicant here? That one is here from 19 McClellan. Huh. Yeah, because they were on the agenda actually last, or they were going to be last time. They right. didn't have an application completed. Right. They didn't. And I sent them right at four another email, and I've emailed them a few times. So it's not, um, it shouldn't be a surprise that, you know, that the hearing's happening. So, yeah. While we're waiting, Nate, uh, you sent an email just before this meeting that you said there was an attachment, and I didn't see an attachment. Oh, you know, maybe I for maybe I replied all instead of forwarding. Um, I saw the attachments. I saw the attachments. All of them. Really? Well, let me have yeah. a look and no, to see. Go to the link, to go to the link, I had to go to the previous to, to the previous email. You did mention. Um, I did. Yeah. This, this is kind of the ID number to join, and this is what you do. But then you said go to the previous mailing to get the link. And so if you went to the previous one, then you could just click on it, Bruce. Yes, but what uh, what Nate said, and this was uh, just, oh, damn, I'm trying to manage this screen. Let's see. This was at 3.30 p.m. today, and Nate said, oh, please find attached information for today's hearing and meeting. And I didn't see an attachment. Hmm. So if it's the t attachment you sent a couple of days ago for this meeting, which has the uh, the photographs, the stock photographs and so forth, I'm I'm good with it. But if you yeah. intended that we have something else at 3:33 p.m., I'm just saying that I don't have it. No, it was just a, it was just the same information that was sent previously, just a good kind of fresh in your reinforce. Inbox. Yeah. Okay, we we're, we're good. Yeah, I don't um, I don't know if I maybe I'll. I should call the applicant one more time or the, I, mean, I think, you know, the commission has, you have the, so you have information in front of you. I think, you know, you can hold the hearing without the applicant, you know, and discuss the project and you could decide to continue it again, deny it, or uh, it's probably about it. Okay. Or, I, or, I, or, appro or approve it. I, I would say let's go forward. Yeah, I would agree. Although I have questions, but. Sure. Let me, um, ben, if I make you co-host, can you 
help if there if you need to. I, I was going to call the um, I was gonna call Scott at Kendrick Property Management. Okay. I don't. I don't. You know. I. I don't know why. Yeah, that is bizarre. They haven't. Yeah, unless he's having trouble zooming, but they could phone. Yeah. True. Yeah, I mean, I will say that I've left a few messages and emails for them, and it hasn't been it's been slow to get responses. So, mm. right. I'm, uh, I'm calling right now just to see if uh, is um is uh is this the applicant then or the contractor or the management company? <laughs> the management company is the is the applicant. So the owner is Hendrick Property Management, and they're saying oh. Jamie. Uh, okay. Um, whatever or yeah. jamie from the builders uh was the you know i've been not ed i've been that he meets by the owner but i've been oh. communicating with someone else and so what they you know what what if can everyone see the screen here yes yes yeah, so, you know what what they've said they're going to you know support the porch and then basically take off everything from the roof down and rebuild it yes um you know using you know you know, pressure treated wood and then Trex decking and then, you know, Trex railings and balusters. And they've sent, you know, a sample stock photos of what it would look like. But it wouldn't necessarily precisely look like that. It would just be that idea. We could say that we would like more examples in uh, order to see yeah. what they plan to use. Yeah. I mean, I think based on the email, on this, you know, they're saying that they would use uh, Trex transcend composite railings with square balusters on deck. I actually think that this might be that might be it. This is actually it. This right. is mm -hmm. the the Trex transcend, and here's yeah, you know, you know, here's the pebble gray, and then right, you know, here are the the See, posts that, that would go with right. it. And that was a little my concern at the top of those posts is different than what's there now. And we, I, I don't have the, I think it was 194 Lincoln came before us where they wanted to maybe change the, I don't know what you would call it, the ornamentation at the top of the columns. And we- They called brackets. Right, the brackets. And we, at, we pretty much said no, and they did find the same brackets. So I don't know if I that would, thing- I would say they should just keep the brackets and reinstall them. If you slide back down to that post again, uh, that stock post, I think there's a flat section above and they could do that. Yes, you see, they could reinstall these brackets uh, as right, a matter of brackets, course. I think in the other house on Lincoln, the brackets were decayed, but these don't look like they are. No, I think they'll be in fine shape because yeah. they're so well protected. We well, ask that they be removed, uh, carefully removed uh, uh, to preserve their integrity and reinstall as uh, to match the existing. Right, so it does give the house a certain distinct care, you know, Bruce, would you find it problematic that these posts would be a composite material and the brackets are wood, or is that not? No, I don't think so. I uh, wonder what it's a composite of, the posts, I mean. They can't be too much of a composite because they've got a structural requirement. Right. I mean, and they're turned. I, uh, they really, uh, do you, where does it say they're a composite? Well, they're, he well, had the application. Really? Let's uh, slide to the application again and see. Um, yeah. Huh. I think it might be a mistake on the part of the contractor. Where does it say uh, composing com composite products to be used, such as Trex, yeah. uh, white PVC trim? I my 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 guess is that the uh, the posts are solid wood. Right. Then. Yeah. I, I. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. I. I would have thought so too, just that, what does it say here? Is there a new pressure here deck? Doesn't particularly say. Now number five, railings. It's not clear about the balusters. Well, it's a square balusters, right? Railing. Yeah, we're talking about railing. the the old the old the original um uh, Yeah. I, I, this is a question that we could confirm, but I, I would, uh, I would speak. 
I guess I'd have to use to say the word expect rather than assume. I would expect that those are solid wood posts because I don't see how you could turn them. You put them on the lathe and get a, get a decent result unless they were wood. These would clearly be questions that we need to raise with them right. at a subsequent yeah. meeting. Yeah. So I think uh, my own view is that we not make a decision, that we get all of our questions lined up, uh, that they be good enough to remind them they missed this meeting, that yeah. we have questions for them, and that uh, we need answers before we can make a, a Yeah, decision. we definitely can't make. Um, a question had also been raised about, um, because that's, Yes, I totally could, you know, concur, Marianne, that we have to continue and it would be helpful to have them here to answer questions. Um, is the house aluminum siding? That looks like vinyl to me. I would guess that it's vinyl. Let me see. I took a photo, some or photographs of this. So, uh, uh, it's, oops, oops. I mean, this is vinyl soft right. here, under here. This is all, this is vinyl. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, I think that I think that corner is a vinyl, uh, a vinyl cornerboard section. I've I've seen that on my daughter's house because I was trying to match it the other day. So yes, I think you're right, Nate. It's vinyl. Are they going to redo the uh, roof over the deck? Well, Apparently they, not. Yeah, uh, doesn't didn't appear to. You know, so I'd asked about the gutters and yeah. the roof and they said you know nothing but you know in this picture it's like the drip edge is rusted it, does, it really does yes it really and it needs it looks like it needs work and that part if you move your hand down a little bit that yeah. that, that piece along there the uh yeah the bracket, the bracket uh, yeah. above the brackets that's really an ugly rotten looking stretch right. of wood good point well hmm yeah the face should probably that's, uh, that's a good question we should ask because uh, you would expect that fascia would be, uh, uh, you know, the, one of the first things to go. So it could be that it was replaced some time ago, you know, maybe 10 years ago because it was indeed the first to go. Right. And it's uh, been, uh, so uh, another question, I think. Good, good, yeah, I mean, this to me looks point. like a vinyl, this looks like they just ran vinyl soffit vertically, you know, under and then they just ran it down too. And yep. maybe they covered up the original beam or they, Put a pressure treated in, like Bruce suggested. I don't know. Yeah. I think we need uh, more information to make a decision. Right. Yeah, I'm not thrilled about the drainage pipes coming out, but maybe that's not our concern. Uh, where? The, oh, these. Yeah. Yeah. It, the, it's uh, yeah. They're not a bad idea from the house's point of view, and it's a. It is a. Uh, but it is. It is a. Uh, it and is a, a well sloped site, so if you had a splash block at the bottom of those, it would do as well, I think. Can we comment on those, Nate? Hmm. Uh, you we know, as part of a renovation, maybe we could. You know, it's, uh, you know, I'd say something like that is, I don't know if you call it landscaping or not, but I think if they're taking it all off and they're putting it back again, then, you know, the building commissioner has said at times that that becomes kind of purview of the commission if it's brand new. Brand new stuff. A meeting for the town. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Brighton's our, yeah. yeah, Brighton's our meeting. Hi. <laughs> I'll tell my kids to come on in then. No. Yeah, tell your kids to come on in, right? <laughs> and I get my dog. It'll be a virtual play date. I got um, my dog too. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is, uh, as an aside, um, there are definitely times in the spring when I walk by that house and that roof of the porch yes. just has students on it. There's no railing. On this and, roof? Yeah. yeah, mom and me wants to say, are you crazy? But yeah, they hang out there. It's probably it's nice and warm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how exactly. safe it would be, but. Yeah. I can't say that when I was 18, I wouldn't have been on a roof like right. that. <laughs> so that was right. They're, they're usually sunning. Yeah. But, um, Okay. I, mean, I think we could continue the hearing uh, if that's what the commission would like to do. Yes. We can we have to have a date and time certain. It looks like there may be one, um, one or two applications. There's a, uh, on, um, gosh, was it Paige or Cosby? Someone is maybe doing um, a wheelchair ramp and some accessible improvements to the house. 
and then there may be another uh, another I don't know if it's a mini split or solar on another house but you know I'm just saying that because if we continue it and we give ourselves a few weeks then you know we could have it also be another hearing for the yes. for the applications as opposed to continuing it you know we could we could continue this till next week if we wanted just to get this over with and then meet as needed because these other applications haven't come in yet so uh, I mean, my, my, my my preference would be to stay with our meeting schedule yes i'm not here next and, week and by I, the way I see, I see no indulgences for people who don't show up for meetings no i agree i agree Indulgences, so that's a lovely word, isn't it? <laughs> Very religiously tinged. Yeah. <laughs> now we were looking at the second... Um, second Monday? Monday in September. Or uh, August? August. Oh, I'm moving... Oh, oh no, please, please don't throw away August. Yeah, right. But that's just in a couple of... The we second could, Monday? Two weeks. Would we say August, Monday, August 17th? Does that work for commissioners? I am leaving on August 15th to see my mom. So in Seattle. So maybe right. you'll have enough people, but. Oh, Ooh, I'm, I, can, I can come. I can you could, come. Zoom, you could Zoom from Seattle. That'd be pretty amazing. He doesn't have Wi Fi. Uh, <laughs> I can't just see, look at my iPhone, right? Oh, Seattle I doesn't have Wi Fi, isn't that no, interesting? No, my, my mother doesn't. But I could <laughs> find the library does, so I could go there. So Is that it would open? Be, pardon? No, oh, it's that's, not. That's, that's troublesome. You outside. You can you know, put yeah, on your I, cell phone. Yeah, I can zoom on my cell phone. Oh, okay. Then I'm all set. Then I can oh. definitely do it. She might wander in the back, but and wave, but <laughs> that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I when my mother got Wi-Fi. You know, that was a big day. Pardon? When my mother got Wi-Fi, that was a big day, and it was much after Wi-Fi was in the world. <laughs> yeah. No, my mom doesn't have it. But yeah. Um, no, I understand. Yeah. So are we thinking the 17th is good for the rest of the commission, or is that good for everyone? Yeah. What time? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Eight hey. fifteen. Four p.m. We'd have to have a motion to continue to then. Yeah. So move. And then somebody makes the motion. Oh, that's that's what Bruce does. Well, no, he could just say and move it to right. <laughs> well, we'll let you go, Marianne. You take it. <laughs> I, I, I move uh, that we continue to August 17th okay, and, uh, at 4 o'clock. And I think Peggy said? Yes, I, yeah. I okay. second. All in favor? We don't have to do a voice vote, do we? I would just to be safe okay. if someone. Okay. Okay. Um, Peggy. Um, I. Yes, fine. Marianne? I agree. We're voting, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bruce? Bruce Coldham, approve. Aaron? Aaron Winter, approve. Jim? Jim Romley, approve. Yeah. Rita? I approve. And I'm Jennifer Tao, by approve. Okay. Great. Great. Good. And I will come if I can do it on my phone. That'll be great. Yeah. Okay, great. And you know what, um, Greta, if we have a quorum, we'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no. But it's easy if anyway, if I can do it on my phone, I'm all set. If I have to find Y Fi, I can do that too. Okay. Hopefully you won't won't have to. Um, so for the we have a public meeting portion today. So there were some items we wanted to um address and let's see. Um so I'm really gonna turn this part of the meeting over to Nate. Yes. Yes. Yeah, hold on. I'm just gonna close the door before the kids come in. The um <laughs> I, I was pretty the... jacked with my grandson. <laughs> Maybe yeah. your grandson and his kids could zoom together. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Seems pretty comfortable just coming over to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the, uh, doing the, a hybrid. He's self-confident. So. Self-confident. Yeah. I think you know we, we don't have, we don't have to discuss everything I, we can or we can we can discuss things and we don't have to make a decision today for instance but one is a legal ad fee so right now there is no fee to apply for the local historic district there's no application fee or legal ad fee and so the town uh, you know pays for it and now that we have more properties so originally when it was the Dickinson district you know for 40 properties it was, it was okay but with the Lincoln sunset now there's you know over 250 or so properties and 
you know, the town probably spent ten or twelve thousand a year on legal ads for local historic districts. So, you know, the planning board and other boards often charge the applicant a separate legal ad fee. So I'm not proposing an application fee, but a legal ad fee. What and, would that run? You know, I think I think seventy five is fair. Um, it probably wouldn't cover the cost of the legal ad, but. Uh, you know, so I think to start, we could say 75 and we could always re-examine, you know, in a six months or a year, but, um, you know. I, I just propose that that's high. Uh, and uh, I, I don't, I, I would propose something like 50 as max, because I don't want to make it hard for people, uh, like people in McClellan, people out here in Beston, I mean, there are more prosperous parts of the neighborhood and there are less prosperous parts of the neighborhood. And I hate to make it more difficult as we just heard with as previous applicants, um, contradictory feelings about support for the district, but the burdens of that support. 50 seems more fair to me. We can always raise it, but nobody's ever going to lower anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I actually have the uh, $50 uh, amount in my mind and thinking it over before we met today. Uh, so I agree with Marianne. And, uh... I, I, I'm good with 50. I'm, I could be good mm -hmm. with 75, but I'm certainly good with 50. Yeah, I think to, I have to check the rules and regs. Um, let me just share those. I think maybe to vote a fee, it may have to be at a public, you may have to advertise it or discuss it. Mm -hmm. But this was just, a, you know, this was just the first, first uh, part of the discussion. So, and, um, Nate, this would be uh, inserted into our rules and I regulations, would it? Or would it simply be uh, something that's done? No, it'd have to be inserted. I'd have it into the rules and regulations. Okay. I just want to see if um, hearing procedures. Yeah. Oh, no, that's 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 a procedure within once the meeting is going. I mean, could uh, anyone, Nate, Nate? Would there be the option for a hardship exemption? There still is. There's there always would be a hardship exemption. I mean, I do think that you know too high of an application fee could be a barrier, but. You know, most of the work that people are undertaking usually costs more than that. I think so. You know what? At least my thought would be at least if there's some fee, there's some value to it. So, for instance, we saw 84 sunset like four times because it was free and things just kept changing. You know, and 99 Fearing, and Fearing Street that, too, 100 Fearing Street. Yeah, 100. Yeah, a number of them. I think just because you know they think it's free. I, granted, there's time involved, but. You know, every time there's a new application, even if it's a minor thing for a, a change in a project, we have to advertise it, mail out a yeah. butters lists, and yeah. so there's you know, Expensive. a few hundred dollars cost, a lot of cost to, to the town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna play. Uh, Mitch, uh, you proposed also. If I might, I, I, I'm sorry. I think Peggy, were you speaking? Yes, I was. Wait, go ahead, Peggy, and then we'll go to Karen. I hadn't raised my hand. I'm sorry. It's okay, no. you were just a little muffled. Oh, I hope you can hear me. I'm, yes. I just get a little bit concerned that Amherst has the reputation of being so hard to, to accomplish things in, when it comes to real estate and, and building. And I don't want people to be discouraged from wanting to live in Amherst who are coming into the community for whatever reason. So I, I think we need to be sensitive to that. And I'm not sure whether that would mean a different fee or no fee. Um, but Certainly 70, 75 sounds high to me. Um, so I just put that out there. I'm you know, just an awareness of, of the, the challenges that, that the roadblocks to people coming into town and, and wanting to make their homes here. So, I mean, do you think 30? I'm, I'm not making a recommendation either way. Yeah, okay, um, Karen. Thank you, Peggy. So, uh, I, I yeah. see the point that if there is a fee it's going to be taken more seriously. They're not gonna just apply and then not show up for the meeting or do it three or four times. So I think that $50 uh, sounds really like a pretty good price uh, that's manageable when you're 
when you're dealing with something like this and you can have it waived if there's a hardship fee. And I think that I read somewhere we were think we could talk about uh, exempting projects that we all want to encourage, like solar panels, fee for fee for that, solar panels, and uh, maybe even the efficient uh, air conditioning, the mini splits too. That I think you wrote that we could think about exempting certain things that seem like such a standard thing to do, and the fact that you have to go and get permission for those things can be really irking a lot of people that are, feel like they're moving in the right direction. So in my view, uh, charging a fee just to make it a serious thing to apply, having a hardship uh, waiver, having it be $50, which is probably pretty reasonable, and then having some things exempted, that's the way that I would, that's what I would vote for or hope. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Thank Agreed. you. Agreed. I, 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 don't, I don't see the rules and regs are silent on the fee and I was just going to check the bylaw I'm not sure maybe we the, if the commission wanted 50 you could vote today and then um, I don't think there's any it doesn't say we have to uh, post it publicly um, we could uh, vote to uh, Oh, we or not even vote necessarily. We could, uh, by unanimous consent, uh, ask uh, Nate to prepare a, 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 a draft change to whichever the document it would reside in uh, to affect a, 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 a fee, an application fee, or, or at least, sorry, a, 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 a an expense charge or whatever. In other words, the, mechan the mechanics of doing this could be uh, brought back and uh, then we wouldn't, uh, the, the, Nate could proceed, we, we could pr proceed at least with the next step, uh, which is basically the wording and in, in, in insertion of this. And then we could look at the, uh, the thing as a, as, a, uh, mm -hmm. as a specific uh, item of change rather than because now we're talking we're, we're discussing it in concept and, yes. and it seems that in concept there's an approval but we would have to do more than approve a concept we would have to vote to approve a specific yes. uh, change to the uh, <laughs> rules and regulations and so yeah. why don't we ask Nate to draw up that specific uh, change and then we can then we can vote on that next time yeah no, that sounds good yeah I mean I'm yeah it's curious you know, in the bylaw, it says the commission can adopt, um, you know, rules and regulations and then fees and other things. And it's not, I, I want to make sure right where we're putting this. So is it in the bylaw? Is it in the rules and regs? And so that's something yeah. I think we staff can look into. Thank you. And then Nate, do you also have to check again, whether this is something that needs to be posted publicly before we vote on it? Yeah. So if we're, if, if um, we're meeting on August 17th, you know, we have enough time to get a legal ad in if we need to. Yes. Not much time, but we could, you know, post that and do, do it that way. I'd also appreciate, uh, as you draft the language, that we'd be approving some brief statement of rationale so, so that people understand why we're doing this, the expense. Otherwise, given the expansion of uh, the district to include X many properties, uh, and then, of course, there'd be the language about hardship, and uh, there would be the reference to our list of exemptions. Right. I have a question. Lauren? Yes. Um, so it's not clear to me that if you uh, apply, you pay your $50, and then the commission says, okay, we approve it. If you do this and this and this, you have to come back next time. <laughs> you then have to pay again. I mean, is it clear that you pay only once or are you going to pay every time you have to reapply? Because, you know, if your car doesn't get through inspection, but you do what has to be done, you don't have to pay again. I think, so if, I think that would be that if, if we ask them to come back, then it's still the same open application, like with Amherst Media. Right. It would only be if we approved or issued a certificate of appropriateness or denied one and they had to come back with a whole new application, but if I we're continuing it to the next meeting, it's the same application and fee. Okay. Right. You have to repost. You know, yeah. if the to be a condition to come back at a public meeting to review something, that's not a new application. That's just coming back at a public meeting. So. I see. Okay. Good. 
Yeah. But I do think that was a good suggestion about an explanation because particularly, I mean, to understand that the LHDC spends ten to twelve thousand dollars a year on ads, given you know our fiscal situation now with all that's going on, that's not insignificant. So, um, all right, no, that's good. That's a good idea, Bruce and everyone. I can, I can, Ben and I can work on some mm -hmm. language and where it will be, and we can review it at the next meeting or. You know, even at the meeting after that, I just wanted to make sure that it's something we're discussing. Um, so not, you know. Okay. That's one piece. And what are we looking at? Let me go back to the agenda. Uh, we were looking at possible exclusions like the mini splits or the. Yeah, I think I, I'm okay with the legal ad, Ben. You, we and I, you and I can work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And for exclusions, again, this would have to, you know, amend the rules and regs or the bylaw depending on what the commission um the size i think you know just because of the number of applications for mini splits this summer you know and it's a seasonal thing and we've had a few where you know there's been some solar panel disconnect boxes so they have solar panels and then um you know they're um we've one or two where people come in and they say oh we're upgrading the disconnect box you know they had something and they need to get a new one um you know there's small other little things it's hard to it's hard to capture every small little piece of equipment but i think you know i just want the commission to discuss it i mean at, at the last hearing there was a little bit of a discussion about you know mini splits could be put in the exterior unit could be put in a pretty uh, inappropriate location what if someone put it right next to the front steps of a house or you know what if they have four units what if a big house has four units that are stacked on top of each other two and two there's a pretty big piece of equipment that then could be located somewhere and so i think it's i think it's difficult to have I, I, I wonder whether we could use language such as Bruce helped us insert mm -hmm. in the paris, uh, and that is uh, uh, that, it, that, the, that the external units uh, be uh, shielded, you know, by vegetation or fencing or whatever. I'm trying to think about the, you know. Satisfactorily screen. Satisfactorily. Yeah, but then, uh, but once we use a word like that, then uh, it's going to, the building commissioner is going to say it has to be satisfactory to us and not to him. That's right. So that's good. And then the building inspector would make the determination. Well, no, he wouldn't. Oh, no, they would. I think that's a really almost an unenforceable condition because that's what true. does it mean? So I think. I think the building commissioner would say, well, that's up to the commission to decide what's satisfactory. <laughs> yeah. My sense of this is that these units uh, really have to stay. I think they should and must stay in our purview because they're, they're, it's, a, it's, a, it's a technology that's um, evolving. Um, and as Nate says, uh, it's, sometimes they have what are called multi-port units. But one of the evolutions is that single port units are, which is to say one interior head with one exterior box. So you'll, uh, there's going to be a, an incentive to have more exterior boxes because they're more efficient. And these are typically stacked um, one on top of the other a little bit. Or, and then depending on where they're located, if they're on the side of the house where snow and ice uh, drop off, particularly if it's from a second or, you know, a high story roof, there'll be uh, uh, an expectation uh, sooner or later that they have uh, some kind of uh, constructed protection over them, an awning off the house or, or a separate uh, kind of roof and so forth built. So these things are, uh, can become uh, quite elaborate. And I think uh, at some point we might decide that uh, they have re re reached a state of uh, some kind of uh, evolutionary equilibrium or something where they're pretty predictable and we can confidently say that we can let it to others. But at this point, I don't think we're there yet. And I think we should retain uh, uh, the uh, task of uh, reviewing uh, applications for this kind of work. Yeah, I mean, this is a little definitely outside of our purview, but I'm wondering, at least in Lincoln, um, North Prospect, Lincoln Sunset, 
you know, we have a, a neighborhood brunch and there's an extensive brunch list is almost like maybe in March, you know, sending out an email saying, just people I don't think are aware that this, that they have to come before the historical commission and they, or the local historic district commission, and they just want to install them is to give them some, the heads up that if you're thinking of installing a split for the summer, leave yourself time to come before the LHDC. I don't yes. know. Yeah. I think that's a good idea, uh, Jennifer, because I was gonna say, you know, we try to, in the spring of every year, send a notice out to um, the district owners. So, you yeah. know, the assessor updates its database on January 1st. So, you know, any transactions during the calendar year aren't, aren't um, necessarily picked up on the assessor's records until January. So, you know, we had done it in March or April. And I think if we have that letter, we could list things that we, the commission has noticed or what, you know, what people are surprised by. So I think, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think you know, mini, mini splits would need it or, you know, we, you know, a fair time, a fair amount, I get questions about like, oh, I'm just changing a little bit on my deck, right? Or I'm thinking about doing this. Is that, is that, does that need to come before review? So I think we could list in that letter a number of things that yes. would qualify for review just so. Yeah, it's not a surprise. So I wouldn't think a mini split, you know, Right. That would be a surprise to me. Um, <laughs> another item I didn't see on the list, which I was concerned is last meeting um, when the people on, oh, uh, what was it? Um, the Sealy Street? I the name of the street, but they came for the chimney, the top of the chimney, and that yeah. seemed like something that I felt badly they had to do that. Yes, I, I, I certainly agree with that. I can't see if there's any reason that we need to be involved in uh, uh, chimney caps or flu caps. Now, I mean, I guess the question is, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes it can be quite decorative, you know, so you could have like a, you know, the old, sometimes older houses have like the clay, you know, chimney caps or you, you know, they wouldn't call them caps, but um, I, I kind of get that too. I mean, that's, but for instance, what if someone is taking down their chimney and they're putting in just like a stainless steel cap instead of, a, you know, I, oh, I guess we, you we, mean don't, if, we don't you have to make clear. Well, I, I think a flu cap is what you would call it. Um, and uh, if they were taking down their chimney and installing a new chimney, then that, that, that's a, another matter. But one of the things that we noticed with the applicant, uh, the very thorough applicants and conscientiously yeah. put together, was that there are a lot of different uh, fairly perfunctory looking flue caps uh, around already. So in a sense, that suggests, I think, that we have already a fairly wide variety of stuff that's already there. And so whether it was stainless steel or black, whether it was uh, simple in design or more florid, um, they are high up, they are small, um, and it's already a varied uh, uh, co you know, constellation of these things. So it does seem pretty safe to me to uh, abrogate uh, our role yeah. here to the building commissioner. Sure, and we, and we, right, I think if we were to say flu cap, and you know maybe that becomes a defined term or everyone knows what that is that i think that narrowly defines it as opposed to something else yes i think i i think flu cap is the uh, term that we could stand by sure yeah and you could ask uh, rob mora mm -hmm. what he mean what he understands that to mean and if uh, and if, if 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 his understanding is the same as ours based on what we've had come before us right then that's for the confirmation of our mm -hmm. you know, safety of our position. All right. And um, that would have to go, again, that might have to be a public hearing to change that, but at least, you know, there's, the commission's discussed it. The other yeah. one is um, this, you know, solar panel disconnect box. So, you know, if, even with a mini split, you get a, um, you know, a metal box on the side of your house that might be like 10 by 17. And that's where you have, you know, basically a large, fuse where you, you know, you can disconnect the power. And so uh, this summer, someone had to upgrade their disconnect box. And I said, well, that's, to me, that was, ex you know, they're replacing something so it's exempt, but what if someone is putting a new one in for something, they upgraded some electrical, I mean, is that, you know, it's kind of like a new electrical meter. Is a new electric meter, that's subject to review, it can be, so. I think if, uh, 
we, I think we could safely push that also into the building co uh, commissioner's uh, court if we uh, tied it to uh, a new disconnect box or, or meter box, uh, whatever paraphernalia for a uh, solar uh, a PV array, if it was located immediately adjacent to the existing uh, uh, meter. In other words, if, if, it's, if it's where there's already one of these uh, kind of mechanical eyesores um, and we're just compounding it a little bit, that seems fine, but if if the box was being put on a different place on you know another side of the house, right? Uh, of course, it would have to be in public view, or it's not our purview anyway. So I, I would I would I would uh, write it that way. I would suggest we could create something uh, that way. It would be pretty safe. It was if it was uh, immediately adjacent to uh, an existing electric meter. Yeah. So we could. Uh, yeah. Immediately, immediately adjacent. To, okay. I think. Yeah, Ben and I can work on that too. So I think it could go for some disconnect box or even like a new electric meter. So, you know, we've had some homes come in and it was a duplex and then they are going from a one to two meter electric service and there's already an electric meter there. So yeah. is, you know, is yeah, that, yeah. does that really need to come before review? And mm. um, Because it's often what's called a production meter. I know I have one. And so basically it's a second meter and it's measuring, it's measuring the, uh, essentially the, the production of the system. I think they still have those, but maybe they're 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 doing it differently. But nonetheless, that's the kind of thing. It's another meter. It's a disconnect box. It's uh, it's some it's it's another small piece of uh, electrical mechanical junk. Mm -hmm. Junk from an aesthetic point of view. What does the commission? How does the commission feel about that? You know, for those types Fine. of things. Yes. Yeah. I'm. All right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I can work on some language with that too. The flu cap, and you know, I think the mini splits are. I don't know. If I've heard Bruce and Morianne, but I think I do think mini splits are tough. My thought is, if we don't want to um, exclude all, you know, for instance, could you say that a single exterior unit? I was going to say that. Yes, yeah, I was, you know, you right. like a, that's a good suggestion. Yes, then, yeah. you know, more than more than two. I don't know, two or less is ex excluded, but more yeah. than two is. Yes. But to review if they're if they're located in the same visible location. Yes. And I don't I mean and, and with the exclusion I'd also add that that, that of course they be shielded from view. So I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. we'll also have to realize that multiple units are occasionally tied into a single compressor mm -hmm. that's on the ground on a concrete pad. Um, so in that those those can be a little noisy. Um, and they might be feeding out to two, three, or four mini splits that are right. small individual rooms. I think, Bruce, you were alluding to that uh, earlier, the multiple units. I, I was saying that uh, uh, there is a, there is a, there is a, um, a force, uh, an incentive, a, 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 a performance incentive and, and and maybe I'm uh, maybe this is old news, because this technology is changing uh, fairly quickly, still changing fairly quickly. For it's been it's been, we've had it in our lives for the past fifteen years, I think, um, but which is not very long. Um, I mean, it's and it's a, it's a it's an absolutely phenomenal technology. And I think of how much time and effort in the first thirty years of my professional life was devoted to talking through with homeowners the various options for heating and cooling systems and every project was different and and from the past from 10 years uh, ago to now uh, you don't have those conversations anymore because this technology is so powerful so overwhelmingly logically compelling um, but at the same time as it as it consolidates its position in the market uh, they, they, they're doing all sorts of things to uh, continue to make these things work better. And, and it's changing a little bit. So you have a, a pattern for, uh, for single, what I call single port units, where you've got not multi ports. So you, you, you will perhaps, if, if, you were, if, you, if we could confidently predict that no matter how many indoor um, heads there were, you know, cassettes on the walls or ducted systems or what have you, there would always be one system outside it just would be a little bigger, 
but there is a pattern to have more individual units. And if you look at the side of the North Amherst farmhouse, where I just put some in last year, you can see uh, how, um, uh, how substantial the aesthetic, uh, the visual impact of these things can become. Uh, I'd be happy to see Nate try some language that would stipulate what we believe would be acceptable. Yeah, that's a good idea. So that we would then only look at ones that were outside that. Clearly uh, outside the norm, clearly outside um, screening, visible, obtrusive that we'd have to think about. Mm -hmm. Do you think, would you want to say one unit is excluded and two or more is subject review or two units, two or fewer well, is we, excluded? But can we specify that even if it's one that it's shielded? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we'd have we did, we could put um right some conditions in it so that you know um so if an applicant came and they said okay we're installing like say Pari for instance where you know we have two outdoor units then you know I think there would have to be um, I, I I would rather uh, I'm in the same situation she is I have one that's visible from the public way and one that is not visible from the public way. Yeah. So I would, I would want to restrict this further by saying the number of units visible from the public way. Right. Right. Well, except that we don't have to say that uh, because it's redundant. Well, it isn't redundant to people who aren't thinking the way we're thinking. So. Okay. But, you know, for instance, if Pari came in and said that she was only doing the one in the back and it was clear that it wasn't visible, I would tell her that that's excluded. And so... Yeah. She wouldn't have had to come before us in the first place. Yeah. But if I, we excluded her one that was visible, no. however, she had two, the second in the back, she right. also wouldn't need to come. Right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, when we think of what we've been asked to uh, 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 adjudicate here, it's almost always been one unit. Um, and so I think we would cover most of the, uh, the, the, the petty aggravations if we restricted it, if we said, if you have one, uh, we could try it for one. And right. if it was, and, and all of the, the other qualifications as, as Maureen has suggested. Right. And then, you know, we can, okay. we can expand but, it if it, uh, if it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all and right. just to clarify, is, is that one condenser or one like unit inside? Well, it's, it's one exterior unit. It's it one compressor condenser unit. Yes, okay. we don't care what's inside. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the compressor condenser unit is, right, the, it, is the term we probably should but use. No, but, but to put them on the back of a house, they're, they're not, they're, the ones that I'm aware of are rather noisy on the outside. You're hearing, hearing the, the motor working, so that could disturb neighbors on the other side, not visually, but uh, sound-wise. Is that a concern for anyone? The, the, or am I just not up to date and now they're quiet? You know, that, no, that's I think possible it, too. We don't have. No, you're right. I mean, so people don't have to do mini splits. They could do like a typical compressor and have central layer, you know, which is a ducted, you know, a ducted system. But the, the commission usually doesn't take into account sound. So, I mean, if it's in the back of a house and it's not subject, if it's not, public, you know, seen from the public way, it's not subject to review anyway. So it's not, that would never have been reviewed. Mm. Uh, These things are pretty quiet. I mean, uh, for those of you that have any uh, understandings or appreciation of decibels, they're around 40, 46 to 48 dB, which is, um, you can hear it, but on the street, uh, in a typical, you know, during the day, it's, you probably couldn't hear it if you were any more than six or eight feet away. So your neighbor, yeah, is further okay. than, than that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's that's the, those are the ones that we've so far, like the unit, for example, that we looked at today, the Mitsubishi unit. I think if you were to look into the data that you'd see it's about, it's under, it's under 50 dB. So I don't think noise is typically mm -hmm. uh, a problem. I'm with this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, so I have three things to, Ben and I can work on, you know, flu caps, is, you know, meters or mechanical electrical equipment and then the compressor condenser unit. So, I mean, that's, I'm feeling good for uh, that. 
unless there's anything else the commission thinks is, you know, for instance, we've seen a few drier vents, you know, uh, I think we've seen two or three, but again, I mean, no, that's, you know, unlike a flu cap, I mean, or maybe like a flu cap, they're, they're pretty uh, standard or is it something that we'd still want to see? I mean, you know, uh, we've reviewed three or four of those. This year. I haven't seen any dry cap proposal, a dry vent proposal that we've, uh, that we felt even moderately strongly about. So I, my sense is that we could, um, we could exempt those. Is there any other thought about those? You know, so we did one on 17. Does, does, do people agree with me on that? Yeah. I am. If you had a white house and they were the only steel unit, but they could be painted white, do we care? I care. The commission the doesn't really regulate color, though. Okay, all right. <laughs> the ones in some of the rentals on um, McClellan, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, the question is right, kind of like the mini split unit. What if, what if in a house they end up putting, you know, if it's a rental and they put four dryer vents, you know, on a wall? Let's say a single dryer vent. Right. I would like to. I would rather. That Karen? Karen? I don't think she's talking to us. Oh. <laughs> she's fallen off her chair. <laughs> oh, no. So, okay, maybe exempt a single dryer vent. Is that, we can yes. try with language for that too? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they, you know, when 17 Sealy came in and they were taking what was really, they had a, a vent out of a window, which is illegal, and then they were putting it, a legal one in, you know, through the siding. I mean, it's, such a minor change and we had them come mm. before the commission. And so, yeah. you know, the contractor said, well, what, I don't, you know, how do we structure this? And we told them they, you know, do the interior work and then you can't install the dryer vent until it's approved, but essentially, you know, then they go and they do the project, they run the ducting inside. And then, you know, what if the commission said, no, I mean, it's just, it sets up a really tough yeah. spot right. for an applicant. Right. Right. Yeah. Hard, that's a hardship. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. exempt a single dryer vent. Okay. I'll um. And they, while we're on the subject of vents and so forth, uh, how do people feel about uh, exempting a single vent through the a plumbing vent through the roof? Do we feel we need to look at a, a little black pipe coming up through a roof? No, I don't think so. Neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so vent, vent, plumbing, vent through roof would be the uh, the term. Uh, I'm trying that. to think about the correct. I can't remember. I'm losing my nouns, but I remember when my uh, Jeremiah, my neighbor, um, got one of those little stoves. Right, you came before us for that, and that seemed very minor. I would like to exempt that too. Do you remember what what we called that? Yeah, they're um, they're a direct vent uh, for a combustion device. Okay, well, whatever you call it, I think it should be exempted. It was fine. They can just so we know what we're talking about. I know you do because you've got one, but uh, we've just talked about a dry vent, which is right. basically a four-inch diameter pipe coming through, and it'll probably yeah. have a, a five-inch by five-inch uh, thing on the wall. The These uh, combustion devices, uh, direct vented combustion devices, will have uh, basically a seven inch uh, plus or minus vent and it's, and it's in a, a one foot square stainless steel um, um, mounting block, I guess, stainless steel mm -hmm. mounting block against the wall. So it's, it's a little bigger. Um, I still think it's fine. Yeah, I think I, I'm, I'm still good with that, but just so we, we, we all know what if, we're talking if about. everyone can see my screen, I mean, here's yeah. an image of what it could yes. look like. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, it depends. I've had a neighbor that put a, um, um, instead of doing this, they want to get it away from their house because they put on vinyl siding. So they put like a four or seven inch, you know, duct out like a foot and then had a pretty big end cap on it. So yes. you know, um, it looks more like, um, Let's refer to it as the, uh, our exemption pertaining to a standard mounting. They're all more attractive than sticking an air conditioner in your window, for heaven's sakes. Yes. 
Yeah, you're right about that. You're right. You're so, right. So we, we'd say this a direct, a standard uh, direct vent. Yeah. Okay. Direct vent hood or something. All right. Yeah, I mean, I could see where you know someone is could do this. They might do a home renovation, you know, and then we'd say that, oh well, you know, sorry, you have to come in for this direct vent here. Yes. And, yeah. yeah here, here's, a, here's another image showing a direct vent in relation to a, a compressor. Yeah. You know, hmm. not, I'm not saying that you do it this, this way, but just, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think this is actually yeah. showing. How are people, we're sort of fine tuning how many things people need to, you know, what things people need to get approval for from us. How do we notify the town? How, how, do, how does all that happen? Well, I think what would happen here is the, um, you know, we so right now there's six things we've discussed today, and we Ben and I would work on the rules and regulations and bring them back in a, a form for the commission to review. And then mm -hmm. if if um, and then you know we pass them on to the building commissioner and the permit um, the inspectors and the permit administrators. So that way it's just you know when someone inquires with the town or is doing work, we would they would know to exempt it. So right now you know they everything we've talked about they send it to me or to Rob Mora to say, you know, does this need an application? And most of the time we'd say yes. So that's why we reviewed the dryer vent on Sealy Street. But if these exemptions mm -hmm. were in okay. the rules and regs, we'd just say no. Yeah. And it was, it means right. we, can, we, can, we can stay in bed longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my, my major concern, we've voiced this already, is the annoyance level. Exactly. I, I want to minimize the annoyance level. Right. I guess even, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, I, I, I don't think when we formed the district, we thought of people having to come for some of these more minor. Mm. Yeah, so true. Or, or if we did, we felt that we would do exactly what we're doing now, yes. you know, in the fullness of time. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, I mean, I think six things are good for now, and maybe it'll, you know, start a conversation about other things, but. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then for minimum maintenance bylaw, I mean, that's, you know, I think. Um, someone mentioned it, and I know the Historical Commission also talked about it, so I guess the question for me would be, when the Commission discussed this previously, was it thought of as a town-wide minimum maintenance bylaw, or would it be um, part of just um, you know, applied within the local historic district only? I mean, I think we, well, we didn't really, it was always on the agenda, we never really got into a discussion of it, um, uh, but I think it's a it's not going to happen anytime soon that it's the historical commission is going to take it on and it's going to become townwide. So I guess my personal feeling was if we could start in the local historic district. I don't know how much of an issue it is. It's probably not much of one in the Dickinson district, but in North Prospect, Lincoln Sunset, yes, it's really, you can pick out the houses that frankly um, are not owner occupied and that there's no maintenance at all. And I know I've sometimes called, you know, Rob Morrow's office and I'm just shocked to hear that, that there's literally no minimum maintenance requirement. You know, I've seen buildings practically falling down. They look like hovels and, you know, a landlord's making money every month. So it's not, you know, a hardship situation. I guess what you see is right. if, when the owner lives in a home, no matter what their situation is, they, seems without exception they maintain their home How, and but these some of these absentee landlords it's and and, and again that the idea that there's no minimal maintenance that can be required is a concern the only thing i want to the only thing i want to say that is slightly adjusting what you said i'm thinking about two properties that you know about owned lincoln yes one is owned by um, sisters who now live in California right. and, and occupied by someone with disabilities. And now that has been worked on. And right, I wasn't there. even thinking of that house actually. But, but I'm, I'm also thinking about the other house across the street from you where the woman who lives there uh, has mental difficulties. I believe that her son is now looking into the house. But we do have cases of people who are aging, possibly people who uh, 
may not be able to afford the upkeep of their house or have anybody in the family who's paying attention to it. So I think when we talk about this, we'll have to think about that as well. Right. I agree, but I actually wasn't even thinking of those two houses. I was thinking of the Eagle Crest property. Sure, of course. Right. And, right. And, and actually the Eagle Crest property on fearing, you know, it's he, wherever he has a property there, it's a problem. Maureen hmm. brings up an excellent point. And, 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 and Jennifer, so do you. You've, you've been the champion of this since the day you arrived, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fully in support of everything that's been said uh, by you, Jennifer. I think uh, this is something that we could start as a commission that was uh, unique to our particular uh, you know, area of jurisdiction. Um, and it might grow from there. So I think that's a very good idea. Um, I think uh, Marianne's concerned for folks that may or may not, we have to have a, um, a provision in whatever we create that, uh, that deals with that. I don't exactly know how it would happen, but I'm, I guess we'll figure it out. It would be a hardship um, clause, I think. Yes, it would, and we'll figure it out. I think uh, it occurred to me, I've been listening to both of you, and, and the way we could start this, I think, would be to uh, basically photograph every building in the district, which we think, and, and, and you folks who live there presumably could walk around with a camera um, uh, over time and, and basically walk the neighborhood and photograph every, every candidate. Um, and maybe it could, then we look at them all and yeah. we have a talk about them and we say, you yeah, well, this one, Clearly, and some of them we might, uh, you know, the Marianne, you'll know, or someone will know that there are specific circumstances. And so that would seem to be the point of entry here. We could basically do a complete catalog of, of concern, and then we could build a case around that, because I think uh, this would probably require um, a degree of public support. And I think the way to get that public support would be to have a, a full documentation of the, um, of the problem, so to speak. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, you know, I, I discussed this, the commission, mm -hmm. someone mentioned on the historical commission meeting uh, recently, mm -hmm. and then I discussed it with staff, and, you know, there's some concern about applying this town-wide, because it becomes, you know, almost like, uh, you know, the, the difficulty is in, in enforcement, and, you know, what's, you know, is it necessary to enforce certain things, um, you know, on rural roads, where it's different than, uh, you know, um, in-town neighborhoods, so, you know, sometimes a minimum maintenance viola has length of lawn, you know, is that appropriate for homes down on Southeast Street or, you know? Right. So I think well, applying it to the local historic districts to start is a good, is a good place to begin. Yeah. And, you know, the bylaw does have some, some mention of minimum maintenance standard, but it doesn't define it. So, um, you know, I think that there could be more uh, put into the bylaw. So to Bruce's point is that this would need, you know, a vote of town council to, you know, if, if we're doing yes. it when it's the bylaw or any bylaw, it would either be a, a part of the local historic district bylaw or part of the general bylaw. So I think in any event, it would need, you know, some review um, outside the commission. I like the idea of having, you know, of photographing homes or having a catalog and then trying to discern what are the issues. So right now, you know, if there's a health and safety issue, inspectors can go out. So, you know, if, if trash is left out long enough and there's rodents or something or, if it looks like the porch is rotten, they can make them fix it. But, you know, if it's just, you know, they don't take the trash in every week and it piles up a little bit, but it's really not a health or safety concern, then that's just the way it is. And so this bylaw could address some of that or even um, peeling paint. It could address homes so that... To what the degree does the paint have to peel off the right. block? <laughs> I mean, you know, but that's, that's, the, that's the question, right? How, yeah. like, what are, what are those kind of thresholds? And I agree for a hardship provision. Uh, I'm not sure how that, you know, would be reviewed, but so uh, the state does have a um, a template for a minimum maintenance bylaw. Ah, we, oh, I think I have wonderful. <laughs> we could request I'm, it and have it be part of another discussion. Yes, yes, oh, that'd be great. Please, I'm very, yeah, I'm very uncomfortable with the thought of someone going around and photographing every house in the historic district. For I mean, it, it, it just starts to feel like overkill to me. I mean, people. I think need to be assumed that they, if they're, unless it's the student rental situation, 
that is being monitored. That's a different story, I think, than going around and-, and Yeah, and you know, Peggy, I have to say, I can't really think of any house I would, I would put on the list that's not a student rental. Because even the house- there's a, there's a house on Cosby, uh, a few, uh, a few, a bit down from you, uh, where the paint, is really peeling off noticeably if you want yeah, i know that house yeah so you know i think that that's an interesting she has a glorious garden but all the paint is peeling off the house and that's not true of the other houses on the block I mean, I, taking photographs from the public way is to me is no more invasive than google street view or what we did when we adopted the district was take pictures from the public way so um it's just for our purposes, I think. We have to be, it, it'll help us make uh, a, a, a it'll, we'll make a better job of, uh, of um, creating yeah, something if we know yeah, what we're working with. We're certainly not looking at, our standard isn't any house that's not pristine. We're looking no. at houses that are really glaringly deteriorating. Yeah, yes. I mean, and we, and we could find by, we could do our job and we could conclude that we can't really do well, it, you know? I mean, it's not like if we, if we if we have a thorough documentation of the problem of what we think and then we decide whether we agree what the problem is because we don't know that we agree what the problem is well thinking about that house on lincoln avenue uh nate or jennifer do you know who did what to get the attention of the sisters to get the house repaired the commission no i don't but i know that it was painted by a, a neighbor. Yes, but but the sisters had to be made aware. I think they were made aware by the town because yeah, I, think, I think it was by a health or safety inspector, right? Ah, okay. Yeah. But, but I think but there were yeah. interior problems as well. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. But I think, you know, right, you know, there's a minimum maintenance bylaw. There's also um, this the historical commission has talked about, you know, how can you prevent demolition by neglect? And so yes. okay, that yes. You know, which right. is something separate but i think i can request a minimum maintenance bylaw template or we can you know ben and i can look for some examples and then it's yeah i mean i think it's a fine line i mean i i want to make sure we're not it's not like a homeowners association where it becomes really restrictive in no. terms of what's no. allowed in terms of gardening or landscaping no. but um so yeah i mean that's why i think i do think pictures even if it was only you know even if you know a half a dozen properties were yeah. Um, you know, taking it pictures of just as um, examples or things to discuss, because maybe what Bruce is saying, maybe there are things that are really critical to regulate, and maybe they're not, to me, issues. Um, I'll volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? No, there was one picture I, I, I anyway, it was a, a house on Fearing that was a student rental, and apparently they had been given permission to start renting it. It had had a fire while students were living there. It was in such bad disrepair. And then they fixed it over the course of almost a year, but it still was horrible. And I, I emailed it to Rob Morrow and they did work on the house so it looked presentable. But I mean, yeah. But I was surprised then when we were having a conversation, he said, well, is it's it was technically up to code, but there was like no paint on the front porch, and the, there was the banis the railings were missing from the banisters, and they did fix it because of enough complaints. But anyway, I was, yeah. so I'm used to taking pictures and sending them places. <laughs> Good. And again, they're always absentee landlords. I've really never come across a house that the owner lives in that doesn't somehow look loved. <laughs> Could there be something in the town rental agreement or the? Because the town approves rentals. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean that's something separate. I think this is getting into you know condition of, um, you know, for a local historic district it can be aesthetic. So the rental registration is really just, you know, people self certifying that they're renting units. Not, you know, they have to certify that it's it meets you know, um, you know, livable conditions or building standards. So, you know, that way. Uh, but to me, this a minimum maintenance file goes a little bit beyond that. Okay. Yeah, I don't, yeah. You know, so that means every time we renew it, we could say, is your house freshly painted? And they, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is interesting. I would like to see, I guess the question is, right, what if, when, when we do have a few photographs, you know, maybe there are just a few 
um, you know, kind of relevant points. Right, right? consistent so, issues right. that come up. Right. Yeah. And then we figure out how it can be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do, right. I, yeah, it's funny because I know there's a few spaces, for instance, I mentioned the trash where they just, there's always trash. And so, you know, unless it becomes to a point where, like I said, it's a health and safety issue, there's really, the town doesn't respond to that, which is just an odd thing. Um, you know, so you could always leave, like, you know, you can always have the red cups and things on the ground and, you know, furniture strewn about, and that's really not, there's no way for the town to address that. Uh, yeah. The beer pong table on uh, McClellan. Right. All right, so yeah, I can ask uh, Chris Kelly from the state. He did a demolition workshop with the commission this month and he mentioned a minimum maintenance bylaw. So Good. I can ask for a copy. Mm. I feel like that would be a real contribution to the LHD to have something like. Right. And again, I don't think it applies to Dickinson. Well, I. Or to the Dickens Historic District. I think once we see it, we could see, you know, the commission can always decide how you want to apply it to, you know, one district or both, but yeah. Yeah. You're very pristine in, a, in the Dickinson District. Uh -huh. We're getting there. Yeah. I mean, we're there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've got um, dinner to make. Uh, how much other, more have we got? If anyone has yeah. any other comments, I'm, I'm all set here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Nate. That was helpful. Um, so we will be meeting again um, at 4 o'clock on August 17th. And is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mm. So moved. moved. Okay. <laughs> Second? Okay. Now we don't have to do a voice vote. We can just adjourn. So thank you all for coming. Okay. Um, yeah. Near and far. Good. 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 Good.